So we've seen this McLaurin series before. We've seen this McLaurin series before. In this video, we're going to show that as you add up all these terms, as you add up all these terms, um, as you add up all these terms all the way to infinity, all the way to infinity, we're going to show that this series will then become, will then be equal to exactly sine of x. So that's our aim. So, so, so when we come to write sine of x, we normally just cut it up and write it as this. But by right, we should have more terms because, because we are taking it all the way to infinity. So us, so by right, we, well, normally we would cut it. We would cut out right here. And then, but by right, we should have more terms. But the, uh, but we're going to call all these terms. We're going to squeeze all these terms into this thing and just call it the remainder. So this whole block here is, uh, is this. So going back to Taylor's formula, going back to Taylor's formula, remember, ta going back to Taylor's formula, if you, you should already, you should have already seen this. Um, if you cut it, so, so this is from here all the way to n, and then you've got your remainder. So, so if you cut it, if you cut it right here, then, then this whole thing here, uh, this whole thing here, including this, um, th th this whole thing here would be your, hang on, this whole thing here, would be your your Taylor polynomial, and then you've got your remainder. Well, this remainder here is this thing here. Now, if, if you look at the remainder, if you look at the remainder, the remainder here you've got n plus one. Here you've got n. Just remember that the remainder is the next derivative to this one here, because this is n plus one, and this is n. And, and don't forget, c is somewhere in between. This c here is somewhere in between a and x. Because our series, because our series is um, is a Maclaurin series, our series is, is a Maclaurin series. is centered at at um, is centered at zero. So because our our series is a Maclaurin series, this a here is equal to zero because it's centered at zero. Um, so 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 remember the remainder, the remainder, this remainder here would be the next derivative to um, to this thing here. So going back to here, so uh, so this is our series here, and then we've got our, our remainder. Well, the remainder will be the next derivative to uh, to to this thing here. So if you go if you go back to here, hang on, the remainder the remainder will be the the next derivative to uh, to this thing here. So going back to here, so the remainder. Will be the next derivative to this thing here. So this thing here is um, is two n plus one, and then you've got it. It will be the next one, so it will be add one. So now uh, these two added together, that will then give you this. Well, the remainder will be given by by this. Okay. So so w when it comes to the remainder, um, if if you look at if you try and if you try and um, understand what's going on here. So so this is our true function. This is our our sine of x. And then, and then when you cut it, it, when you cut it from from here to here, if you cut it like this, this this here is your your Taylor polynomial. This here is your Taylor polynomial. So so this here is your 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 Taylor polynomial. But but you're you're interested in in the remainder. So if you look at this, your 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 Taylor polynomial. If you um if you take away the uh, the remainder, that will then take you. To, to the true function. If you're here, say, if you take away the remainder, that will then take you to here. If you, so, so this is your, if, if you're here, if you take away the remainder, that will then take you to your true, your true function, sine of x. Um, if you're, if, so, so, so you're going down here like this. If you're here, now if you add the remainder, it would then take you up to the true function. If you're here, then you add, the point I'm trying to make here is that, when you're here, if you take away the remainder, that would then take you to here. Take away the remainder, that would, that would take you here. If you're here, then you add the remainder. So, so when you're trying to show that the remainder heads towards zero, because that's our aim, we're, we're trying to show that the remainder is heading towards zero. You don't really care about it being, um, uh, you don't really care about it being, hang on, you don't really care about it being negative or positive. You only care about the, now, if, if, you, if you're trying to show something's heading towards zero, you see this is positive, 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 negative, negative. Well, if, if something's heading towards zero, 
Then the modulus, then, then you can look at the modulus. The modulus will, will head towards zero. If, the, if you see here, we are trying to show that the remainder, we are trying to show that the remainder heads towards zero. But rather than looking, rather than trying to keep track of positive, negative, positive, negative, just look at the, uh, the gap in between here. The gap in between here would be, would be the modulus of this thing here. Just concentrate on the gap. Um, even, even though you're trying to show that the, the remainder heads towards zero, um, you, you can just look at the modulus. The modulus really, the modulus here really represents the gap in between here. The gap in between here. So if the gap is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, um, if, if the gap is heading towards zero, then, then, then the remainder is, is also heading towards zero. So remember, the remainder is, it could be, it could be positive, it could be, it could be positive, it could be negative, it could be positive. But let's look at the modulus. The modulus represents the, the, uh, the distance. In a way, it represents a distance here. Uh, and then just keep, just keep track of the modulus. So, hang on. So the modulus of the, um, the, uh, the remainder, the modulus of the remainder will always be greater or equal to zero because if if you look at this, the gap is always above zero. It can it can the gap here can never be negative. The gap here can never be ne um, negative. So so if you look at the modulus, if you look at the modulus, the modulus must be greater or equal to zero. So now we need to um, we need to look at this bit here, which we, which I will continue continue in the next video.